Hey there guys, what's up? Ragtu here, welcoming you back to Ladder Anxiety. Tonight we're playing some random battles on Pokemon Showdown because we're gonna relax and we're gonna have a nice time. Because even though sometimes Pokemon can be pretty stressful, it doesn't have to be. We can use it to have fun and to unwind. Now, Entei versus Jellison, that's a pretty bad matchup. But we've also got a Mega Abomasnow, a Fion, Registeel, Garbodor, and Deoxys Speed. So I think I'm gonna switch right into Abomasnow. And Abomasnow is gonna take, or gonna avoid the Toxic rather. So we find out Jellicent's carrying some leftovers. That's some pretty useful information. I'm gonna Mega Evolve and go for the Wood Hammer. It's gonna either force, it's gonna force the Jellicent out, and Evelto's going to be the Pokemon that my opponent brings in in response. Woodhammer gonna take a nice chunk out of Eveltal. And I took a little bit of Woodhammer recoil, but that's okay. So now, I think I go into... I kind of want to go into Garbodor to try and set up some Toxic Spikes, and I think I'm going to do just that. So Eveltal gonna get the more optimum switch because of its U-turn, and that's okay. This lets me see what else my opponent's got in their party. And my opponent's packing an Excadrill, actually. Now, I think, unfortunately... Right, I can't actually do anything to the Excadrill. All of my damaging moves are poison. That's gonna force me out. I don't really have anything too great against Excadrill. But maybe if I could bring Deoxys Speed in... So I'm going to switch into Obamasnow. And Obamasnow is going to take the Earthquake. Actually, better than I thought he would. That pleases me. So I'm going to go for the Blizzard, just to put some tremendous offensive pressure onto my opponent. As, actually, my opponent's going to go for the Iron Head. I don't know if the crit ended up mattering, but a crit is what happened. So now, let's go into Deoxys. And this is, unfortunately, Deoxys Speed, so... No fun stuff coming from here. But we can go for the superpower. And we are going to be able to knock Excadrill out. So now it's one for one. My opponent's shown three Pokemon counting the Excadrill. I've shown four. So my last two Pokemon should still be a good mystery. And Uxie is going to be my opponent's Pokemon of choice. I'm going to go for the knockoff just to get rid of its item here and now. Take out its leftovers. And Uxie's gonna go for the Stealth Rocks. And while that's not so good for my Entei, none of my other Pokemon really especially care about this. In fact, I think I can go very safely into Registeel and start setting up. So Registeel's gonna lose its leftovers, unfortunately. But I do have rest on this Pokemon, so... This actually works out to my benefit as I'm going to get... In fact, why don't I just go for rest now, so that I can force the sleep turns. I'm going to get two guaranteed turns of sleep, as Toxic Croak is going to be the Pokemon that comes out. Now, Toxic Croak clearly wants to go for the fighting type move, but I kind of want to stay in. I'm going to go for the sleep talk. Toxic Croak going to set up its swords dance, and I'm going to get some additional boosts with my curse. Let's go for another sleep talk. Toxicrow gonna go for the Drain Punch. Registeel gonna get the Iron Head off, gonna knock Toxicrow low. I'm gonna go for the Iron Head manually now. As Registeel is brought very low, let's see if it can't pick up the KO onto Toxicrow though. And Registeel is going to come through with the KO. So Registeel very likely gonna go down now, but I think it did its job quite perfectly. As it managed to go toe to toe with. A Toxic Croak, so you can't really go wrong there. I'm gonna go for the rest just to be safe, and Devaltal's not gonna take any chances. Gonna knock me out straight away with a Dark Pulse. So I do have Fion with Ice Beam. I've got Entei with Stone Edge, which is unreliable, and I've got Garbodor. I kind of want to go into Garbodor and start setting up some Toxic Spikes. And I'm going to hit Evolta with a Toxic Attack. Unless my opponent's got a Steel-type or another Poison-type. It's got Licky Licky. And it shows Cloud-9. So this puts me into a pretty good position. 
because I know that none of my opponent's Pokemon can absorb my Toxic Spike, so I'm just going to go for those right away. Licky Licky, gonna knock Garbodor down quite low. Now while Uxie and Develta will fly over the Toxic Spikes, this is not going to spare Jellicent, so it won't be able to stall out my remaining Pokemon. And against Licky Licky... I'm going to go into Deoxys, and I'm going to set up my Stealth Rocks, and Jellicent's going to come out. So my opponent was very clearly anticipating the superpower that I used last time, and that works out to my advantage. As I get my Rocks up, Jellicent gets toxic Now all I have to do is deal with Jellicent, and I should be able to win with Entei. I'm going to knock it very low with my knockoff. And Jellicent going to go for the Shadow Ball to knock out my poor beloved Deoxys. Jellicent can't hang on forever because of the Toxic, so I'm going to go right into Entei, and I'm going to go for the Flare Blitz, just to start knocking it as low as I can. It is going to be enough, actually. Now let's see if the pavement that I've set up so far is going to be enough to win me this game. So Licky Licky comes out. I have yet to reveal my Fion. A critical hit is in fact going to knock out Licky Licky. Now Yuxi comes out, takes the Stealth Rocks. Let's see if a Flare Blitz can't knock Yuxi out. This is a Choice Band Stab Flare Blitz from an Entei. Yuxi is going to go down. And now Eveltal comes out, takes the Stealth Rocks. And goes down to the Flare Blitz. So that ended up being an excellent game. I was very pleased with that. And I think we've got time for one more. So let's go for it. Let's look for one more battle. This time my opponent is going to lead off with Mantine. And I'm going to get Cobalion. This is not in fact a Stealth Rock Cobalion. I've also got my own Licky Licky this time. A Muck, a Xerneas, an Eveltal, and a Sigilyph. So I'm gonna go for the co I'm gonna go for the taunt with Cobalion. As Cobalion takes the scald, and my balloon gets popped, but I don't end up getting burned, which is pretty nice. In return, let's go into Licky Licky to take the oncoming special attack. Licky Licky gonna end up burned, but that's okay. I wasn't really counting on this Pokemon to get anything done anyway. In fact, I can go for Sword Stance to nullify that damage immediately. And I think I'm going to do just that, because I don't particularly foresee myself needing the Licky Licky, and Corsal is going to be the Pokemon my opponent brings out. So I can use Knock Off, and I think Knock Off still does lots of damage even if my opponent has an Air Balloon. So let's go for that just to eliminate critical 44%. That's not exactly what I was hoping for, but... So this Corsola very likely going to try to set up some spikes too. I kind of want to go into Cobalion, and I think I'm going to do just that. So switch out of Licky Licky into Cobalion. And Corsola is going to go for the Recover. So my opponent got some momentum their way. I'm going to go for the Taunt again. As I should outspeed some Coral, right? And Farfetch is going to be the Pokemon my opponent brings in. So hopefully I've stopped some... Swords Dancing. Hmm. How to handle a far-fetched. I don't have any form of hazard removal either, so those rocks are staying up. I could go into Sigilyph, and I could start setting up my cosmic power. I think I am going to do just that. As Sigilyph going to take the Brave Bird. And my Flame Orb is going to activate. So let's go for the cosmic power. Let's get our defenses raised. As Farfetch is going to go for the Leaf Blade. Going to get a critical hit, actually. And now I'm going to go for the Roost, just to put myself into comfortable HP. Can never be too careful. Farfetch is going to go for the Brave Bird. It's going to do less this time than it did before. So now, let's go for the Cosmic Power again. As Delphox is going to be brought in. I'm wondering if my opponent was anticipating the Psycho Shift. Hmm. 
I'm anticipating the trick, honestly. So I kind of want to go for the stored power. Actually, Delphi's just going to go for the Shadow Ball. And my stored power is not going to do anything to it. Shadow Ball doing 34%. It looks like I'm probably going to lose my Sigil of Fear. As I don't have anything to touch the Delphox with. I could save it though. Try to get rest on a more optimal Pokemon. I think I will do just that. I'll save Sigil of for later. And we'll go into Licky Licky. Licky Licky not going to take any damage from the Shadow Ball. And this should allow me, in return, to get the knockoff onto the Delphox. So let's see if my opponent anticipates this move. Nope, gonna go straight for the Fire Blast, gonna knock out Licky Licky, actually. And this gives me the opportunity to retaliate. Delphox is quite quick, but my Tornado should be quicker. So if I can get the knockoff, then I could do a lot of damage. I could also just go into Muck and go for the Shadow Sneak. That could be a fun play. Imagine winning with Muck. I think I'm going to do just that. Let's go into Muck. Let's go for Shadow Sneak on Muck and see if we can't rack up some damage onto the Delphox. With Muck's special bulk, we shouldn't take a lot of damage from Delphox. Actually, saying that, I'm not entirely certain of what Delphox's base special attack is. It's going to go for the Psy Shock, though, not carrying the Psychic. Well, that's going to let me bring in Tornadus. And now I can go for the knockoff. Aside from Corsola, this will remove the item of pretty much any one of my opponent's Pokemon. So that's going to let me gain a lot of momentum my way. And I think if Corsola comes out with the amount of HP... Oh no, it recovered. That's right. Still going to take a lot from the knockoff, actually. And I have this superpower. Do I dare go for it, though? I'm going to go for it. We are, in fact, going to be able to knock Corsola out, but this leaves Tornadus quite weakened, and I probably only have a few attacks left in it when I account for the Stealth Rock switch. Maybe I can catch something unaware with my Hurricane, though, since my opponent might not be anticipating a mixed Tornadus. But then I'm counting on Hurricane's quite rather shaky accuracy, and, well, that's not fun any day of the week. So my opponent going to bring out Mian Shao. And this would honestly be the perfect time to go for the Hurricane. Eh, why not? The Hurricane is going to connect onto Mian Shao and going to knock it out instantly. My opponent was probably anticipating the switch. Was probably not expecting to get outsped. Now the question is, do I stay in and go for a knockoff onto Mantine to remove its item? I think I do as well, you know. Let's go for it. Let's take out Mantine's item. Turns out to be Leftovers. And Mantine's going to use the Skull to knock Tornadus low, but the burn it picks up is going to knock Tornadus out. So, I could go into Xerneas now, feeling more confident about my ability to sweep. I think that's the only play I've got, you know. If I go... Sigil of Shutout Speed, and I should be able to get the Roost going, actually. So, I'm going to go for the Roost. I'm anticipating the switch back into Delphox. Now wait, hold on. Hold on, I might be able to work with this here. If my opponent's anticipating me sticking around and they go back into Delphox, I'm going to go into Xerneas. I'm going to show my trump card. And I'm going to try to get my opponent to put a non-optimal Pokemon out here so that Xerneas can set up its sweep and go on a rampage. The Delphox would be perfect because Xerneas, through Geomancy, will be boosting its special defense. So Xerneas is going to come out, going to take some Stealth Rocks, Manton going to switch out, and Delphox is going to be brought in. That's exactly what I wanted to have happen. Now, I don't naturally outspeed but I should be able to rack up some damage. Hmm. If I take out the Delphox... If I go for the Moonblast now, I'm not entirely 100% certain I pick up the KO. Maybe. Let's go for it. 
The Fire Blast gonna connect, actually going to knock out my Xerneas. That's pretty unfortunate. Now, I think it falls to my Cobalion. Now, Cobalion should... I think it has speeds by one point. And it should have speed by one point. One of its, the mouth's on my side. So, I'm gonna go for the Iron Head. And this puts... Cobalion against Mantine, Farfetch'd, and one Pokemon I haven't seen yet. Now, fortunately, Cobalion is pretty good, so depending on the matchup, I could walk away very happy camper. Mantine is going to be my opponent's Pokemon of choice. I'm going to take a big risk. I'm going to go for the Swords Dance. My opponent going to go for the Skull. Don't burn. Okay. That makes a big difference. So now, when I go for the Iron Head, that does a lot of damage. Uh, but the Scald No Burn? Perfect. We're still in this game. Oh, but Mantine holds on. We must have gotten a low roll that other time. Mantine going to hang on, but going to be flinched. Let's see if Cobalion can't pick up the final KO. Or the final hit. <laughs> it is going to be able to knock Mantine out. And now it's Cobalion. Basically against two Pokemon. Depending on what my opponent's last Pokemon is, I might be able to set up with Sigilyph. But it's just as likely that I will not be able to. So let's go for the Iron Head. Hopefully with a Sword Stance, no resist. Farfetch'd, it's going to get knocked out. What's my opponent's last Pokemon? That'll make or break this game. It's a Garbodor. Depending on what Garbodor's moves are, it shouldn't be able to touch my Cobalion. And it might not be able to touch my Sigilyph either. Let's go for the Iron Head. Gonna do almost half. The Gunk Shot's gonna come out. That tells me that my opponent does not have anything to deal with Cobalion. I'm gonna go for one. Nope, my opponent's just gonna forfeit. Alright, that ended up being a really good two battles. It was a really good set of matches. And you see, we just sat down and we played. My opponents put up great fights, knocking me down to the brink both times. And I had a lot of fun. The competition was awesome, and we got some good Pokemon. We set up some neat plays, and we got some really cool opponents. So, if you have enjoyed this episode of Ladder Anxiety, then please let me know with a like and a comment down below, telling me just how much fun you've had, and let me know if I've helped you relax in some way or another, or if I've made Pokemon more accessible to you. I always love hearing about that. Until then, guys, be sure to take care and have a good one. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.